Hey guys, thanks for joining me for episode of Learn and Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at the first expansion to Sagrada. This is a, an expansion I've been looking forward to for quite a while, as I was a big fan of the original game, in which you guys can find and link below if you guys are interested in checking that out. And so with this expansion, it's going to add the f up to five to six players to play, so you're going to have all those components in there. And it's also going to add a couple of new features that I'm going to go through during the video. So with this, I'm going to try a different format uh, with the expansions going forward. I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing so you guys can see all the stuff that is in the box. And then I'm just going to go through and teach you guys the new rules that will change the game. So if you guys like these videos, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel as it's going to help me to continue to grow and continue to bring these exciting titles to you guys. And if you also want to get notifications anytime I release new content, go ahead and ring that bell so that you get an email anytime I bring new stuff to the table. So let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in the box here. So we have the rule book that covers all the new detailed rules. We have the different templates for one of the expansion elements, which I'll be covering in a minute. We have some new stained glass tiles. Some new objective cards, looks like for part of the expansion, as well as a couple new cards for that. New tokens for the two new player boards. We have a little dice tray that you can put together. New crystals, more dice for the two additional players, so you can play up to five to six, and two new boards. Setup using the expansion to Sagrada works pretty much the same way. There's only a couple major changes. First off, if you are if you decided to use the private dice pools, then you'll give each player a private dice pool. And then the other major change, no matter which way you're playing, is setting up the dice bag. As you guys can see on this chart, if you're playing the standard game, there'll be a set number of dice that you'll place in the bag depending upon the number of players. And then if you've decided to use the private dice pools, each player will receive a full set of 10, two of each dice, color. And then the rest of the dice will go in the bag based on this chart, as you guys can see here as well. For the player, if you're playing with the private dice pools, then each player is going to roll their set of dice. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then they'll place them in the wheel in any way that they want to. Then the remainder of the dice will go in the bag. Again, as you guys can see on the chart, with me playing a two-player game and using the private dice pool, we'll be placing 30 dice in the bag. From there, you can mix that bag up nice and good. And then, like I said, you'll follow all the other standard setup instructions. Now, you're only going to use the additional tool cards if you're using the private dice pool uh, wheels, in which case, and you'll add these to the mix, or you can choose to use those in your game. And then you, we also have the new versions of the private objectives. In this video, I'm gonna just use those alone. You can choose to do that, or you can mix them up with the other ones from the original game and do it that way as well. So from there, then each player is going to get one. Then the rest can be returned to the box. From here, then we're ready to start the game. Let's go ahead and move into the game now, and I'll show you guys a few rounds. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and reveal these private objectives. Normally, like I said, you would not. And I'll show you guys how these are going to work. So at the end of the game, these will add to your score based on the dice values in the highlighted areas of the window. So for this player over here, if he has the two dice here in the middle and on the end, he'll total up all those values and those will add to his bonus at the end of the game. Other than that, with, if you're using the wheels, the private dice wheels, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how that's gonna work now. So I'm gonna have our player over here be the first player. And just like in the original, you're going to draft a number of dice. Now with the players using the private dice pool, they're going to draft one die per player and one additional. So with us playing a two player game, we're just going to draft three dice and give them a roll. So now that we've done this, then we're going to go ahead and start the player's turn. So during a player's turn now, they get to draft one die from the pool, one die from their private dice wheel, and they can choose to use one of the tool cards again by using their favor. 
Now, all of these are optional. They don't have to do any of these or all of them. They can choose which ones to do. So let's go ahead and start with our player. He's going to go ahead and draft one die from the pool. And then he's going to draft another die from his private wheel. So let's do this one. From here, then we're going to move over to the next player to do the same thing. So with our player over there, let's go ahead... Let's go ahead and draft first from our wheel. And then we'll go ahead and draft a, a die from there. And again, both of our players don't really need to use any of the tool cards right now, so they're both going to pass on that. The final dice will be added, or final die will be added to the round tracker as normal. And then the bag will be passed to the next player to take the next turn. And again, this is going to be going back and forth between the players until the 10 rounds have expired, and then the players will score up their their uh, their windows as normal. So I'm gonna take you guys through a couple more rounds. So again, we're gonna move over to our player over here now to take the second turn. So again, he's going to draft three dice. Okay. So he'll go ahead and draft this one here, and He's going to go ahead and spend a favor to use this one here, which lets him, after drafting, you can swipe... Oh, no, I want to use this one. So this one will let you re-roll two dice in your private dice pool. So we're going to go ahead and re-roll these two here. Okay. One of four. So he's going to go ahead and use one then. Well, let's not do that. Let's do this one. Place it there. Moving over to our other player. He will go ahead... And let's go ahead and draft this one here. And then we'll draft this one here. So then that, this final one will go up here. And then we'll go move over to our next player to go. So again, he's going to draft three. Man, we're rolling low today. And so we'll go ahead and do this one. Let's go ahead and draft that one up there. Then we'll move over to our next player over there. So let's go ahead and draft this one here. And we'll do this one here. And again, I don't really want to use any cards. So that is the end of that round. And like I said, this will just continue going until the players complete their windows at the end of the 10th round. At that point, then you would move into scoring. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on it. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you guys say. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.